They're probably four times harder for double the loot. It's not worth it. We are getting out of here. Another day, another black mask. We need to talk. The last Hardcore Iron Man episode was a long time ago, and the clips from it were from even further back. The clips you're watching right now are from close to four months ago. If we're going to do this series, we need to do it right. You guys need to be caught up, and that starts today. This series also needs to be uploaded consistently, and that starts today too. You also may have noticed something through the first six episodes of this series. I haven't touched a single piece of group content. The initial plan was to transition to group activities later in the series, but that plan has changed. I don't want to hear that I was carried to X or feel like I was able to accomplish something because I knew other Iron Men who could tank for me or help me in some way. To me, the spirit of Iron Man mode is to have to work for everything. And sometimes to be true to that spirit, you have to make things a little more complicated. I've decided to officially make this Hardcore Iron Man a solo-only account from this point forward. I have not participated in any group content to date, and I will continue my objective under those same rules. If I want something, I'll get it myself. This does not change the end goal of the series. I want to get the dormant title, which is every single unique from Telos, and I still think I can do it. We are almost 1600 total, and I'm still getting all of my food from the gnome restaurant. It's downright embarrassing at this point, the amount of quests we haven't done. And at this point, there is literally no excuse for me to not have Menifos yet. So this is going to be my final time buying food from the gnome restaurant. I'm done. As soon as I run out of food from this invent, I'm going to go unlock Menifos. Thanks, Cannon. Appreciate you. Keep up the good work. That is level 74 Slayer. One more level until we have Gargoyles, which are some of the best GP in the entire game. So I'm pretty excited for that. Let's keep it going. That is level 75 def and 100 combat as well. So we're actually done with Simona for now. We can go and grab, grab tasks from, what is it, Dirtle? <laughs> what the f*** is going on? Imagine if every time you did a quest, you got a thousand loyalty points. How sick would that be? Shiloh Village quest complete. All right, please don't give me like a terrible task that is far too difficult for my level. The very first time visiting Dirtle... We're going to be here a lot. This is the Slayer Master that's going to take me to the Promised Land. We can probably do Water Fiends now. Yeah, we'll take the Water Fiends. Absolutely. Unreal, dude. Metaphos unlocked. Right off the bat, we're going to set this thing up so we're getting Port District. Rep. Set the star. And now it's time to uh, work on unlocking this deposit box. All right, we've unlocked the bank deposit box in the Port District of Metaphos. Pretty sure that's all we needed. So I am now good to go. Do you guys think we're there yet? Are, are we? Oh, there we are. We're there. Third chest of the day. Ooh, the Darox Great Axe coming in. Can I do anything with that? I, I can't remember which items I have. Hold up. Let's go to the bank and check. And, oh, it's a gut. I thought that was Darox Pants as well. Okay, so we've got our second Darox piece for full set. Aram's Hood, Guthans Chain Skirt, Ferox Flail. All right, let's do one more trip. Back to back? Nope. 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 I, I don't even want to waste a badoodle on this. Yep. So, assuming I've got hit chance, this should be a good task. If I don't have hit chance, this task is going to be literally terrible. That is level 76 def. Ooh, dangerous water fiend of peril. What a big dude. All right, go. And kill boss. They did the they did elite creatures so much better in old school, in my opinion. 78 life points. What's a slimy egg? Squick the squid pet. Having my own source of food is so incredibly nice. Just being able to chill AFK and Metaphos and actually get food I can use for slaying and bossing as well. It's uh it's a pretty exciting time on the hardcore, although I should probably talk about why I'm even slaying in the first place. Warning: what you're about to hear is a terrible idea. This is from four months ago, and at this point, I think I'm able to share with you guys how poor of an idea this actually was. I'm currently training Slayer so that I can equip Bayonite armor so that I can do the Queen Black Dragon on a Black Dragon task. The Queen Black Dragon is extremely above my pay grade on this account, but as soon as you factor in the Black Mask accuracy and damage bonus, it's something that is potentially attainable and doable. So that's why I'm training Slayer, but more on that a little later. Ooh, mithril dragons. Can I do them without... You know what? I'm gonna... We'll, we'll figure it out. <laughs> I don't have anti-fires, but it's, it's, it's gonna be fine. 54 prayer. Hey, that's my first gargoyles task. 
Oh, I just realized, boys. Do I have enough points for this? Wait. Killing blows quicker. Yes, I do. Oh, thank you. That's very fortunate. If we have to do this whole task with the rock hammer, I would I would not be the happiest of campers. Level 78 def, two more levels till we get our armor upgrade. Okay, I gotta bank. I'm about to lose my hardcore. One moment. <laughs> Alrighty, we just got done our first ever gargoyle task. I made about uh, what a good 600k, and we got our contract done as well. Very, very pleased with that assignment. One of my favorites for sure. There it is. The Black Dragon Slayer assignment. I think it's time to get prepared for the Queen Black Dragon. I got it into my head that I could do QBD without super anti-fires as a way to get Snapdragon Seeds, Prayer XP, and a Royal Crossbow. The Prayer XP would be to get to level 75 for the Prif requirement. The Queen Black Dragon requires level 60 summoning, so I'm going to get that done. There it is. Access to the Queen Black Dragon Lair. I now have everything that is required to get there. But before we actually go to the Queen Black Dragon, I need to take a couple safety precautions. I'm gonna want the combination of both a Sign of Life as well as a Ring of Life. That way, if things don't go well, I've got two chances for my life points to go below 10%, which means two chances for the Ring of Life to teleport me to safety. This is also a very good safeguard against any kind of disconnect or lag or anything of that sort. With these two items, things should be relatively safe, even if I make a mistake. 82 shards per, ready? 40,000 shards, thank you very much. That is level 79 def, one more level until we can equip the Bay Knight that we will be taking to the Queen Black Dragon, to Vindicta, to, you know, pretty much everything. This is an absolutely massive level. Mostly because I didn't die on the way. Oh, help, 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 help. Oof, get out. That is level 80 death coming in. So in terms of gear and equipment, this is everything I need for Queen Black Dragon as well as Vindicta. This is everything I wanted. I've got a couple quests to do. I've got some other stats I need. I need a sign of life. But in terms of my actual gear with offensive stats, this is everything I needed to be able to go. Can I just say... Doesn't look as cool as the tier 70 stuff. Look at that HP bonus. Dude, look at that HP. Hold up. I need to get some logs. We're going to bonfire as well. I currently have 9,300 life points. <laughs> um, okay. How is, how is QBD going to kill me? I'm just training my herb lore a little bit to get to level 68 so that I can make a regular anti-fire with a green men's ale for a plus one boost. I know a god banner is a very easy plus two boost, and I could also use a brown spicy stew for a six level boost, but I was so close to the level, I figured I may as well just get it. I just thought I'd mention I am still doing reaper assignments, although it's hard to accumulate a lot of points doing the super low level ones, like the King Black Dragon, Dagonoth Kings, and Barrows, but still I am doing them and I'm making pretty decent progress. That's also level 74 magic, which is not bad. In one more magic level, I'll be questing all the way up to 150 quest points to be able to use the Vanquisher Staff. I'm level 74 Hunter, and with a Super Hunter Potion, I can boost all the way up to Divine Implings. Divine Implings have a chance of giving you both signs and portents of life. That's what we're after. This may be my first time ever actually going to Puro Puro to get something, and I've gotta say, it's a pretty cool feeling. I feel like a real Iron Man. Not that this is at all like a meta required thing to do, but it's pretty cool to go to this place with an actual objective and an actual thing that we can get. Please! I just potted. Gib. Thank you. Okay, another sign of the porter. Something you need to understand about Divine Implings is that they are extremely rare. You can go 10, 15, 20 minutes of hopping worlds without finding one. Open my jar, okay. Nope. 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 To make matters even more annoying, there was a bug in play that would stop me from being able to click on the Implings sometimes, even when I'd found them. Okay, please. Nope. Yes, it actually works. That's actually, that's perfect. That's actually what I needed. Right? That works. Right? I'm assuming that works. That totally works. The sign of life and the portent of death are very similar to each other, but not identical. Both will bring you back to life upon dying, but there is one critical difference between the two. 
It's the difference between 15% life points and 25% life points, which doesn't seem like much and didn't at the time. After spending well over an hour hunting Divine Implings, I decided it was time to get one single QBD kill before ending the stream. I knew I'd be able to go back and get a sign of life later, and I thought it would be fine. This is a cardinal sin on a hardcore Iron Man. You're never supposed to cut corners, and you're never supposed to take any risks. This didn't seem like a big one, I still have the Ring of Life, this will still bring me back to life on death, but this is a tiny bit less safe. I'm geared and I'm as ready as I'm ever gonna be. Let's get it together. It's time to take on the Queen Black Dragon. I have no food left. Dude, I'm so close! No, I had the tab, boys. We'll get a kill. We'll absolutely get a kill, though. The practice kill was extremely useful. It gave me an idea of how much damage I'd be taking and also how the food consumption was. It also gave me a lot of ideas on how to reduce the amount of food I was using. Now it's time for the real thing. I'm actually going to build a Dren before going in, and I should be able to cruise my way to my first ever successful Queen Black Dragon kill on the Hardcore Iron Man. With the practice kill out of the way, it was time for the real thing. Phase 1 went extremely well. I didn't even get a Grotworm spawn, and into Phase 2, I've barely used any food. Things are looking pretty good. But it wouldn't be long before everything came crashing down. At this moment, I did something that I hadn't counted on. I had the supplies, I had the food, I had it all figured out, and I hadn't counted on me misclicking and making a mistake. Running into the third firewall, I misclicked my 2H keybind, which unequipped my shield. This killed me. I can't believe I just did that. I just... I've, I've never been known to panic at bosses. I've been very good at them in the past, and I took my past record and figured I wouldn't have a problem with this. This is a boss I've killed thousands of times on accounts significantly lower level than this one, and I absolutely blew it. I genuinely didn't post this video for a good month because I didn't even know how to explain it. There's no real good way to explain it other than I panicked, I made a mistake, and it was a fatal one. I am so lucky I had an extra life with the Divine Coin. If I hadn't, this would be the end of the series, losing everything to the Queen Black Dragon. I've lost everything I had equipped and everything in my invent to spare for my Fire Cape and my Black Mask. A small price to pay to retain my hardcore status. But what happened to my safeguards? Why didn't my Ring of Life go off? And what happened to the Portent of Death? Here's the situation. As soon as the first firewall hit me, I clicked back to run back through the firewall and out of range. This should have worked, but you'll see that 1290 hit is my portent of death. Something I didn't know about the game that I now know very well is that if you proc a sign of life or of death, it will actually root your character in place for a single game tick. This meant that instead of running out of the firewall as I had intended, it stuck me directly back inside the firewall that I was one single game tick from running out of. So effectively, my portent of death killed me. It healed me 1,200 life points and rooted me into the firewall that was in the process of killing me. My ring of life never went off because 10% of my life points is approximately 800. I was never knocked below 800 life points. It's been four months since the death and I have not died since. And looking back on it, I think there was an extremely valuable lesson to learn. That situation was extremely unlucky. Even with me making my mistake when I did, I should have been able to get out of it, and if my portent of death hadn't gone off at that exact same moment, I wouldn't have died. If QBD had hit me with a range attack beforehand, my ring of life would have procced and I wouldn't have died. And there were a number of other factors at play as well that would have prevented me from dying. But ultimately, this is the price you pay when you cut corners. I should have called it, I should have said, you know what, I'm not going to go for one kill tonight, I'm just going to do it the right way. And you're going to see in the next episode of this series that my entire plan for this entire hardcore changed after this moment. I want to do this hardcore right. I want to quest, I want to unlock everything, and I don't want to cut any corners for the entire rest of this series. 
I don't want to take any risks on this account unless I know that the chance of a mistake happening is as low as it possibly can be. If there's a quest or a requirement or something I can do to make it safer, I'm going to get that done first. That is my promise to you guys, and you will see me living up to it from this point forward. The panic situation is another thing that I need to work on, and you'll see in a couple of videos from now how much time and energy I've put into working on it, so that I can trust myself to do the right thing in high-risk, high-pressure situations. But that's a story for another video. Guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. I've been holding off posting it for a really long time, but I hope it was worth the wait, and I can't wait to continue progressing on this series. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like and or subscribe, and outside of that, I will catch you in a couple days for the very next upload. For the first time ever on this YouTube channel, I have an actual upload schedule that I'm switching over to where I'm going to be uploading the hardcore on Mondays until it's completely caught up to where everything's at on Twitch, and I'll be uploading a different video, whatever it may be, every Thursday as well. So definitely look out for those. I know an upload schedule is something that you guys have been asking for for a very long time, and I'm excited to have a little more structure on the YouTube side of things. So anyways, that's it for the video. I hope you all enjoyed. Have a good one, peace out, and I will catch you in the next one.